Night has fallen, and the moon is a glowing golden orb in the black sky. See how it shines on the dark back roads of America, and on one road in particular. Come with us, and we'll take a walk down the moonlit road, for the night is waiting, and the moon is full. The Moonlit Road presents Episode 1, A Mother's Love, written by Craig Dominey and told by Kathy Camerlin. Not so long ago, many families in the eastern Kentucky hills lived in isolation from the outside world. High ridges and poor road conditions kept them miles away from modern conveniences like grocery stores and hospitals. If someone ever got sick, a family member would have to ride for miles through the hills to fetch a doctor, sometimes taking a day or more to return. The Bishop family lived in a ramshackle farmhouse deep within a remote hollow. The steep, rocky hillsides had long given up what little sustenance they could provide, and Howard Bishop, like many of his neighbors, was forced to work for the lumber companies. A proud man in his late thirties, Howard had no love for the greedy lumber barons who forced him to work brutally long hours. He also hated to see his mountain birthplace ripped apart in the name of industry. But when the bitter winter winds would blow through the flimsy walls of his broken-down home, he knew that he had no choice but to succumb to their will for his family's sake. Howard's only peace came from Elizabeth Bishop, his wife of three years. Although Howard showed a stoic exterior to the world, his heart belonged to her. Five years his junior, Elizabeth was a beautiful woman, toughened by years of mountain living. Their relationship wasn't overly affectionate, but both felt a great deal of comfort, knowing that the other was nearby when the black night would fall across the hills. And to them, that was enough. In the early spring, Elizabeth had just given birth to her first child, a little girl named Anna when she came down with a bad fever. Howard watched with concern as Elizabeth feverishly tossed and turned in her sweat-soaked bed, her pretty face drawn and pale. Is Anna all right? whispered Elizabeth hoarsely to her husband. Howard looked over at the child lying still in a laundry basket that served as her makeshift crib. She's fine. Don't worry. He replied, trying not to betray his concern. You just get some rest. I know something's wrong. She ain't moved in her crib for hours. She won't even let me nurse her. Howard tenderly wiped her brow. She, it's all right. She's just sleeping. When Laura gets here, I'll run into town and fetch the doctor. Laura was Laura Shellnut the wife of Howard's good friend Walter Shellnut. Since the Shellnuts lived down in the valley where the land wasn't quite so barren, they were able to eke out a respectable living as farmers. Sometimes they even brought fresh vegetables up to the bishops when times were really tough. But more importantly, Howard knew he could depend on them in times of crisis. And though Howard did his best not to let it show... To him, this was a time of crisis. An hour later, Laura arrived to care for Elizabeth, and Howard roared down the treacherous mountain road toward town. The logging companies had torn the dirt road to pieces, and Howard's rickety old car pitched and swerved in the furrows and mud holes cut by the lumber trucks. Sometimes the muddy road would plunge straight down the steep mountainsides without guardrails, forcing Howard to proceed at a snail's pace. But nothing was going to stop him from fetching help. 
When Howard finally arrived in town, he learned that the doctor had left for a neighboring town and would not return until the next day. By now, a fierce thunderstorm was lashing the hills, and Howard had no choice but to wait out the storm overnight and find the doctor in the morning. When the doctor finally returned the next day, Howard pulled him into his car and roared out of town toward home. The evening's rain had made the slippery roads even more treacherous, and the two men had to occasionally get out and push the car out of deep mud holes. After what seemed like an eternity, they arrived back at the Bishop homestead. Howard leapt out of the car and bolted for the house. I'm home, yelled Howard as he threw open the door. I brought the doctor. He then saw Laura Shellnut sitting on his wife's bed, tears streaming down her face. As Laura turned to face him, Howard sensed the horrible truth. He staggered over to his wife's bed and looked at her pale, lifeless body. He was too late. Howard wailed in anguish, his cries of pain reverberating throughout the house. He then rushed over to the crib, only to encounter a second tragedy. His young daughter lay cold and limp, much in the same position as when he left her. The dreaded mountain fever had claimed two more victims. Two days later, Elizabeth and Anna were buried in the community cemetery, high atop a windswept bluff. The mourners sang solemn hymns around the freshly dug grave, believing that mother and daughter were safe in the arms of God's angels. But Howard Bishop stared angrily at the menacing skies, his fists clenched in the frayed pockets of his old wool suit. After the service, he shrugged off his consoling neighbors and stormed home, bolting the door behind him. Facing the dark and empty house alone, everything in his life taken away from him, Howard stared out the window for hours on end. Wondering why the loving God he prayed to every day at church had suddenly betrayed him. <laughs> the next day, down in the valley, Walter Shellnut rose before.